Hi everyone, welcome back to our main homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to build simple and really strong farm gates like these. So this is a gate uh, that I'm just finishing up as one of the first steps to close in the sheep pasture. This is actually a rolling gate. Um, all I have left on it is to put diagonals. They'll come on this back side where I am, but diagonals between the center uh, post and the end post. So one here and one there. I'll show you the other gate. So it'll look very similar to this one. Um, and of course, once I get the diagonals on, I will put some of the fencing on the metal fencing as well, just to close in any gaps. The sheep try to get through the smallest places, but the fencing uh, keeps them from going anywhere. So I actually built these two gates last year um, when I was building some gates to close in the front and side of the sheep barn as well. Um, and then I remembered I had shot a lot of video of that process. So that's what I'm going to show you today. It's kind of a blast from the past, but this was shot inside the sheep barn. Um, and I'm going to show you how to build these gates. Super easy and they're super strong. So I'm out in the sheep barn. I moved my temporary workshop from the porch out into the barn uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, trying to clear off the porch so we can enjoy it a little more this summer. Um, and also, black flies typically won't come inside a building. If they're really bad, they will. But for the most part, they'll stay out of inside. They don't like inside. Uh, so this is a black fly free zone-ish. And also, this is kind of where I'm going to be using the gates that I'm going to be building today. So it makes sense to do it inside the barn, but that's not the real reason. It just works out that way. Um, these gates are very simple. I'm building them out of 1x4 uh, rough cut lumber that we get from the Amish sawmill. Nowadays, that's where we get everything. Um, but it's, uh, it's very strong. It's hemlock. It's not the strongest wood, it's not a hard wood, but it's very durable, especially once it dries, and um, it's cheap. You can get it from the Amish for way less than you can go buy lumber from Lowe's or, or um, Home Depot, especially around here. And the nearest Home Depot is uh, about 80 miles away, so not very convenient either. So obviously I did some research uh, before I started building these gates and I've already built a couple of them but today I'm going to show you I'm going to build a double gate um, that's going into the front of my barn. The main reason I'm building these gates and they're going to actually be attached to the barn on the inside is so that we can uh, kind of control traffic flow so it'll keep the sheep from coming into the barn from into or out of the barn from one side or the other depending on how we want to open things up. So one one, the way I designed the barn, one side of the barn opens up into what will become our barnyard paddock um, where the chickens will be and the horses will be. It'll kind of a, a group area. And then um, when we don't want them in that area, but they can still come in and out of the barn through the front door. And that's where these two doors are going to be. And then that front door actually leads out into the pasture. The side door will lead into the pasture as well, but only if we have... A gate on that separate that is going we don't have it yet but that will separate um, the barnyard from the rest of the pasture from access to the pasture so it's more about a control thing yes we have sliding barn doors in the front we have a double double barn door and on the side it's just a single that closes about a six foot opening um, the main reason I'm building these gates to attach is so that we can leave the barn doors open for ventilation, especially this time of year when it tends to get a little warm, although the barn is much cooler than it is outside typically, um, but also for a security factor. So the sliding barn doors, it's possible a sheep could bump them or a couple of sheep could bump them and slide through an opening, especially babies. Um, so in this, this come in next spring, and maybe, maybe maybe right now for a couple of them because they're still small, but next spring when we hopefully have a lot more lambs and we will, um, you know, they'll be in the barn, especially um, when we want them in the barn or when they want to come out of the pasture and into the barn, this will help keep them from escaping, hopefully, and keep everything kind of contained. Our sheep are a little bit like goats. They're escape artists at time. Uh, part of that's my fault, um, but it's also just the lay of the land. We use electric fencing with a solar uh, panel and a battery uh, kind of thing that charges the electric fence. 
and um, if you don't have it set just right and, and deep enough in the ground, they will figure out a way to root under it because the bottom line runs along the ground. So it's not electrified. It can't be or it would keep every the rest of the fence from being electrified. But um, the bottom, they'll get their nose under that bottom line if you don't have it in, in as good a spot as you can get. And they'll pull push up and they pull a post out and then they all run out. Or sometimes just one or two of them and the rest of them, I guess, get scared. So they stay inside or maybe they're just better sheep. I don't know. Having said all that, I'll show you the two gates I've already built. They're a little bit different and I'll tell you why. And then let's start building the ones for today. So this here is just some railing that I put up. Um, there's... There's the access to the barn loft. I'm gonna obviously replace that ladder. That's the ladder I used to build the barn <laughs> with that I made out of two by fours. But this is just to keep the sheep out of that area where I'll, that I'll use for storage and um, there'll be feed. There's feed bags in there now, some barley bags, that kind of thing. But um, in the long run, I'll probably use 55 gallon drums just to keep everything secure, keep any other animals out of it. But um, this is just to keep the sheep in the their barn area and keep them out of my area. And this is the gate that I built that goes into that um, that area I just showed you. And it's a very simple gate and I'll show you kind of how that gate was built. You can see that the two sides extend up a little higher. That's just in case I have to come back and put another board at the top. Um, I don't think that's the case. But um, if I don't put another board at the top, that'll just be my style feature for these gates. And then here's the gate that closes off the side barn door from the barnyard. So we'll use this again to contain sheep in the barn when we don't want them in the barnyard for whatever reason. Or we'll use it, we'll open it up and then that gives them in and out access in the barn from the barnyard. And of course the gates I'm going to build today are on the front of the um, barn so they will be to give them access to the pasture basically so it'll um, you know it kind of helps with flow and then when we're working sheep if we need to vaccinate deworm whatever we're doing this will help us kind of maintain a, a traffic flow pattern that works you know best for us you'll also notice that this gate has a diagonal whereas the other one didn't this gate's just wider by a couple of feet i think um, but that's just added support. Um, if this other gate starts sagging that doesn't have the diagonal, I can always kind of square it back up and come back and put a diagonal in for support. The two gates I'm building today are only about less than four, just under four and a half feet each. They're double gates, so they will not have a diagonal either. But that's a very simple process to do. And eventually when I'm building other gates for the pastures and the barnyard and that kind of thing, access gates, um, they will probably, a lot of those will have diagonals because they're, they're gonna have to be wide enough to have vehicles drive in and out of. So the first thing you gotta do is measure the opening you're trying to close in. Uh, so that gives you the width of your gate and then you need to determine how high your gate needs to be. For sheep, the minimum is probably about 42 inches tall. Um, and then, you know, depending on what the spacing is, between your boards on the gate it kind of determines for me how tall i go and then again i'm leaving those sides a little bit taller just in case i need to put an extra board at the top in case it's maybe not tall enough but um we haven't seen anything where if it's less than i mean if it's at least 42 inches uh we haven't seen any sheep trying to jump that they could i, I think they could but they're not trying to do that to get out. So back to this small gate, um, I did my research and you can see the spacing between boards is much closer on the bottom two spaces versus the top two. And that's just because that's a four inch space. So these are four inch boards, four inch board on the bottom, a four inch space, a four inch board, a four inch space, a four inch board. And then the, at the top two spaces are six inches. Um, the bottom two spaces are not big enough for adult sheep to stick their heads through. A babe, a lamb possibly could, um, but they can get it back out. No horns, nothing like that. And we only have one horn sheep anyway. Um, but the space is small enough that the adults cannot get their heads in there. When you move up, an adult might stick their head through that third space up that's the first from the bottom, the first six inch space. 
but um, but that's not really an issue. And if it does become a problem, I've already got Plan B, which is just to put some to staple some fencing up across it so they can't they don't even have access to the spacing. But I don't think that'll be necessary. But for sheep, you go four inches on the bottom two spaces, which brings you up um, roughly. Let's see about. 24 inches or so a couple of feet and then from there you can go to five or six inch spacing I just went straight to five or went straight to six um, I'm going to be building some sheep panels which are going to be used for lambing jugs those are the pins you put the the mother in mother and the babies in to let them bond for the first three days after they've uh, lambed and you separate them from the others just so you can be sure that the baby is having access to nurse and isn't being bullied or bothered by any of the other sheep and also so they can just have their own little quiet place and then i'll also be building a creep panel which will be exactly the same size i'm trying to build all of this interchangeable um, but a creep panel is built so that it allows just the lambs to go through it has small enough openings that the the babies can fit in but the adult sheep can't fit in and the whole idea there is to create a, a space where the lambs have access to feed all the time but um but they can get away from the the adults which if they're all together and you gave them access to feed all the time they would all, they would eat all the time and they'd each out of house and home unfortunately but you put you know quality feed in for the lambs just to make sure they're getting everything they need we did not do the creep feeding this year um, we weren't set up for it we've talked to some of our amish friends they don't do it at all um, they do separate the mother and baby into the jugs which is a very good idea um, but as far as creep feeding they the lambs their lambs do very well and actually our lambs have done extremely well uh this spring without creep feeding and of course we're giving extra grain to the mothers to make sure um they're producing milk not extra but being sure they get sufficient grain let me say it that way um but also the babies have access to hay and the, you know after their 10 days to two weeks old they're starting to eat hay eat the grass they'll start nibbling on the grain some they're not going to eat a whole lot but um but they've had access to that and they kind of join right in so i mentioned the creep panel I'm not sure i'm actually i will build a creep panel just so i have it but i'm not sure how much we'll use it because what we did this year really worked the flip side of that is we had four mothers and four you or four lambs we only have one female this year, so next year we'll have five, but eventually we hope to have, you know, 15 to 20 ewes um, that are lambing every, hopefully every spring. And when that starts happening, we may need a creep area and maybe a bigger one than I'm planning on building, but we may need a creep area then just to give the babies access to that food because there's so many. Right now, the numbers are so small, it's not a big issue. Um, but once we get a lot more sheep, hopefully in the next couple of three years, then um, we may change how we manage things. Back to the gates. So welcome to my workshop. The first, the first step was rough cut lumber, and you can kind of eliminate this step with some projects. But this one, I'm actually going to do it. But the first step is none of the lumber is square on the ends. It's usually very rough, or if it's cut, it's not cut straight necessarily. That's not their, uh, their goal when they're milling lumber. It's to mill the lumber and get it out of there. And it's usually four to six inches longer than what, what it's labeled as. So if it's an eight foot piece, it's usually eight four to eight six, sometimes eight, eight ten even. Um, but what I'm going to do first is square the ends of the lumber and then I need eight 48 inch boards they're going to be double boards on either edge of, of each gate, building a double gate. So I need four sets of 48 inch pieces. So that's what I'm going to do first after I square off the ends. The reason I'm squaring off the ends is because when I, want, when I go to line these boards up, if the ends are square, then I can put them, I can make each end meet. So the end of the horizontal board meet with the outer edge of the uh, vertical board and that will make sure that everything is actually square when I put it together. I still measure it to make sure the, the width is the same all the way up. <coughs> Excuse me. But 
that makes you makes it a lot easier to keep things square. That's one part of what makes this way easy way to build gates. Not build gates, but build gates. measured once usually it's measured three times and cut once well I measured once and cut eight times because um, I just use I really measured more than once but I used the board that the first board that I cut to measure all the rest of them that way they're all exactly the same I don't have to worry about making a mistake with the tape measure or not getting it exactly right they're all the same because I used this the one board to measure them all that makes squaring up the gate and making sure that it's um, kind of even and it'll make it a lot stronger as well. So one of the things I've learned about uh, building, at least the way I build, which um, I don't have any kind of teaching, I taught myself. <laughs> um, so I do it my way, which is good, I guess. But um, one of the things I've learned is you have to really manage your lumber lengths really well. I go to a lot of... Uh, I. I do a lot of research to try to plan, number one, but also when I'm designing what I'm going to build, I try to write out what lengths of lumber I'm going to use. Obviously, if I have a 16 foot piece of lumber, I may cut it into four four foot sections, or I may be planning on cutting it into, you know, a 10 foot section and a six foot section or whatever. But um, utilize, making the best use of your lumber goes a long way toward managing the cost um, of building and also having less waste. Although, you see all of this that's sitting here, all of this, oh, you can't see it because it's out of the picture. Anyway, this is kind of my st stack of scrap lumber. Here's a few pieces that are just left over. So I will either use these on another project. These are great for using for corner bracing, depending on what you're doing. You can actually rip them lengthwise and then put them each in corners to, to help stabilize a box or a crate or whatever you're building. But, um, but also, this is hemlock. It is great firewood for cooking. So this will, you can, once it's good and dry, it, you can start a fire with it. It's great kindling, but also it will heat up very fast. It doesn't burn very long, so it's great for using in a summer kitchen because it burns, gets hot real quick, and then it dissipates and you don't have that heat all the rest of the day, especially if you're outside in an enclosed area in a, in a typical summer kitchen. But, um, but we use this to cook really in the shoulder season. So uh, early fall and late spring, like right now, we're using this if we're gonna cook at all, which we're almost past the point of even having a fire inside, thank goodness, uh, for a few months anyway. But, um, because it gets so hot in there. I love a fire and I love winter a little bit more than this time of year. But um, but no, this is great cooking wood. So the great thing with uh, using rough cut lumber is you're gonna get a lot of scraps this size, bigger, smaller, whatever, that you can uh, use to burn and cook with. So now I'm gonna cut the horizontal slats. I'm gonna need five for each gate, so 10 total. Each gate is gonna be 53 inches wide. Um, so I'm going to need 10 of those, of course. So now I'm taking 14 and 16 foot pieces of lumber lengths and uh, cutting them to 53 inches. That was the best utilization I could come with the less waste or having reasonable size pieces or approximate size pieces to use for another project. So that's the other side of that. A lot of times you need to be planning ahead. Okay, so if I cut these pieces 
to this length and I have this left over, what can I use that for? And if you already have a plan for it, it help, really helps you decide which of the longer pieces to start cutting. Um, so then you can, you know, have, have those leftover pieces ready to go. You, you're going to have to cut them again almost inevitably, but you'll have the right pieces. They won't be too short for whatever you're planning on using them for. flat spaces around here um, so I brought everything out to the trailer bed which gives me enough room a flat ish surface and also some square surfaces to help me line everything up to make sure I can keep it square and, and kind of flush where it should be I'll still use the tape to measure it but anyway I got my eight 48 inch boards which will be the uprights on either end of each gate and then I've got my 10 53 inch uh, horizontal pieces five for each gate. Now I've laid these out. I took a piece of scrap one by four, um, which is the same as these obviously, um, because my bottom two uh, spaces are going to be four inches between uh, rails. So I brought these out and um, so that'll give me that spacing. I'm going to lay the 48 inch board now on each edge. Get it flush with the bottom. Do that on each side, but really I'm just going to be nailing one at a time, obviously. And I'm kind of particular sometimes about how I arrange these because I want there to be the right look and the right surface on the outside um, versus you can put these on. You can put this kind of blemish surface on the inside and then it doesn't show. Not that that's a big deal, but it probably, this will entice sheep to chew on it. Uh, they won't chew on this. So once I get things lined up, I've got one side lined up. Um, I'm going to use two and a half inch nails. These are one inch boards. So typical, if you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, you're going to buy a one by four it's not going to be an inch thick. It's going to be three quarters or whatever it might be, but less than an inch. These are all an inch. You have to be a little careful because some of them will be a little over an inch. Um, not going to make a difference structurally, but um, you know you kind of want to keep everything as uniform as possible. Uh, most people that put gates together would probably use screws. Um, I have a ton of these. What are they're called? Decking nails but they are two and a half inch spiral nails so they're really resistant to pulling out. Um, they're galvanized so they're not going to rust and um, I have a ton of them. This is what I use to put the siding on the barn. Obviously I have a still a lot of building to, build, to do and a lot of siding to put up using these same nails but the box was a 50 pound box. It would, might take me a lifetime to use it. <laughs> probably not. I'll probably run out now that I said that. But um, anyway, these nails are perfect for this because they'll go through here. I won't nail them all the way in, and you'll see that. But um, I won't nail them all the way in because I don't want to nail into the trailer. But I'll leave them all about the same length. Once I get all of these nailed on this side, once I get all of these nailed on this side, then I'm going to flip the gate over and put the, the, the other um, ends on and sandwich this. I'll show you what I mean. nail it into this trailer, and I didn't, luckily. Those, those rails are all kind of where they need to be. Um, once I get done with this side, this edge, that edge on this side, I'll flip it over, put the uh, other two boards like this, um, on the other side of the rails and uh, that will actually sandwich the rails in between two boards on the end which gives it a lot of strength and also um, makes it so that these boards are sandwiched so they're not going to pull out very easily from one side possibly.
spacing. Now I'm going to grab some 2x6s and space the top two rails. Put a nail in each one, being sure they're lined up, and then it's time to flip it. Also, you'll notice I'm only putting one nail and I'm putting them all in the same place. On this side of the gate, I'm going to do two nails, one here and one here, side by side. When I flip it over on the gate, I'm going to do one in the corner and one in the bottom corner, you know, spaced on the four by four that, or the two, the one by four that's going horizontally. That way, I'm sure to miss these nails when I'm nailing from the other side. Just probably doesn't make a difference, but I have hit nails before, and so I might as well just miss them. So I flipped it over now. Um, so it's time to put a rail or a, a board on either side, the vertical boards. Um, to sandwich the horizontal rails in between them to give it strength and also to keep e any board from being pulled out because you're nailing it from each side. Um, once, when you start to flip it at this point, the reason I only put one nail in each board is it will actually shift now. So I'm using this trailer to line up this edge to be sure it's, it's straight and then line up this edge. This corner is a 90 degree angle. I've checked it and um, it's a steel trailer so it shouldn't have moved since I checked it. Um, so anyway, I'm lining this, pushing this board up against that side, lining this up with this edge and then that makes everything turn out to be square. So here are the two finished gates hung. Um, it's a double gate. Each one is about four and a half feet or so. Um, and so I didn't put any diagonals on these. I've got wood stacked um, all around the outside of the barn ready for a new project. So I'll go inside and show you what it looks like from the inside. So here's the makeshift lock that I used, um, just two fence staples with a uh, big spike between them, you know, spanning from one gate to the other just to keep it closed. And I put two staples on the outside as well and haven't had to do anything else. It's keeping them in very well. So these are technically farm gates, but I call them barn gates because they're more for traffic flow than anything. But they're made out of one by four lumber. And so when I build the gates for the fencing gates that kind of encompass the, <coughs> encompass the barnyard and the pasture areas, I'll build them out of one by sixes, a little bit bigger. So you've got, your spacing will still be the same because we're trying to space <coughs> space for specific animals uh, we're going to have horses and sheep in the pastures but uh one by six will work perfectly but for here one by fours and all the sheep panels that i build will be out of one by fours as well so everything will kind of be uniform and and kind of flow together these are dual purpose gates not only do they contain the sheep and help us with traffic flow they also provide these hair sheep who shed their uh, coats in the summertime uh, a place to rub. This rough cut lumber provides the perfect surface to kind of help them pull off the excess coat in the summer. And of course, they'll grow it right back in the winter just like a dog. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to follow along. We've got a lot coming up this summer. We're going to stay super busy, of course. And uh, please leave a comment in the comment section if there's anything you um, would like to say, and we'll get back to you. When both batteries need charging for your portable drill, old school.